Welcome to the Purposely Aligned Entrepreneur Podcast presented by Boss Girl Creative. This is episode number 476. Today, I want to dive in to why I keep seeing people say things are easy because they're not, but they are. So let's dive in. Hey, I'm Taylor Bradford, host of the Purposely Aligned Entrepreneur Podcast presented by Boss Girl Creative. I help small business owners turn their purpose into a paycheck and it starts with visibility. In the online world, visibility equates to sales. So if you're dreaming of being the next million dollar entrepreneur, you've come to the right place because weekly I share visibility tips, brand advice, and business resources. So grab a notebook, your favorite pen, and a beverage, and let's do the work. Hey, welcome to episode 476. I'm your host, Taylor Bradford. Thank you so much for being here. I am talking about business being hard, yet being easy, yet being hard. Before I get into the nitty gritty of this week's episode, I want to dive right into what's been going on in social media land. Social media headline number one, Meta's added a new way to incorporate offers into your ads. Meta will now be able to automatically detect offers based on your chosen URL. Social media headline number two, TikTok announces new Eventbrite integration, a new way to promote events in your TikTok clips. Social media headline number three, Instagram will enable you to add 20 audio tracks to Reels, an interesting new addition for your Reels clips. Social media headline number four and keeping with Instagram, Instagram tests making the messaging icon the main focus. They're exploring another way to lean into DMs and messaging. Social media headline number five, Elon Musk plans to move X headquarters out of San Francisco. Musk is unhappy with recent law changes in California, so HQ is moving. And that wraps up this week's social media headlines. Okay, before we actually dive into the meat of this week's episode, I have to share a nugget of an observation that I had over the weekend, and it has to do with TikTok. So I follow an Instagrammer, Catherine Manning, who was originally a YouTuber, and then had kind of a life change and kind of slowed down on YouTube and and what her channel was originally about. And then she went more into being a lifestyle creator on YouTube, and then really like dug in and started creating short form content on Instagram, but also over on TikTok. And she just posted recently on Instagram, a reel, kind of talking about how she made money through the TikTok creator program. And I was literally blown away. Evidently, she's had a couple of videos over on TikTok go super viral or viral for her and her short form content. And she shared how much she was making on these couple of videos that I guess you have to like fall into certain parameters on TikTok in the creator program. Anyways, she was making like within a first, I don't remember the parameter, but it was not very long, like less than 30 days. She was already almost to $1,000 on this one short form piece of content. And I was blown away to actually see somebody share some numbers. And I don't know if the monetization that happens on Instagram is similar for Reels content. I do see people say that Instagram pays them to create Reels. And what they mean by that is they're part of also a creator program similar to what TikTok does. And just quick like squirrel moment here. Yesterday, I was targeted by Instagram or Meta to take a short survey about themselves. And one of the questions at the very end, and only gave you two options. One of the questions was, do you feel like Meta has like done everything it was meant to do and is like all done? Or are they still like relevant enough to keep going in the future? And I was like, but there's not an option, another option to to pick something else. 
And so like I was I that question sat with me and I was like, uh, I think they're I think they're played out. <laughs> like they are trying to get into so many realms and not just like get good at what they're you know, what they were originally meant to be. But anyways, and one of the other questions was, is Meta a follower or is Meta a leader? And I like immediately thought about TikTok and I was like, they're totally a follower. (laughs) And that's how I answered it. So anyways, I don't know how well Instagram reels, like the content creators who are being paid to create reels similar to how TikTok creator program is. I don't know the, like the difference. I don't know if reels can be like making that level of money versus you know what TikTok creators are doing but like it was so eye-opening and I have such like a a firm stance on do I really want to like open up the can of worms that is TikTok like people are doing really well on TikTok but yet you know the the whole data and the like the policies and you know why are we like having so many problems anyways So I I feel very conflicted, but I see people doing really well on TikTok and I'm like, what? So crazy. So that was just a quick little nugget observation, actually two because of the meta survey that I got targeted to take yesterday or uh, yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Anyways, so just some random nuggets for you. So I was scrolling on Instagram as we do when we are searching for inspiration. Specifically, I was looking for audio and audio that I could use in the future. And I came across an Instagram reel that talked about like, can we just stop with the, if you do what you love, you will never work another day in your life posts. And I was like, that is so true. Like, for real. Yes, there is joy. Like I did a reel recently on Boss Girl Creative. If you're not following me there, sidebar, if you're not following me there, would you please go do that? Okay, unsidebar. So I did a reel and I said, you know, I am so like thankful and so grateful that I get to do these things that I love so much, especially Sugar Creek. There are parts to Smitty's that I really, really do enjoy because I do feel that we are being good stewards as roofers to help you protect your greatest asset and to do the job right and to do the job well. And uh, so I do find joy in that. I don't really find joy in communicating to insurance companies because there is so much like just it's more than negativity. It's, I feel like there's just a lot of the devil in insurance companies. There's so much animosity. And like, I have to be very careful because of our state laws. I do very careful with how I respond. And I talk about being professionally rude a lot when I'm talking about insurance. And but even there's a line like I can speak from a contractor's standpoint And I just want to like reach through the phone and just shake the person on the other end. And I, I get it. They are either like bound by whatever their internal guidelines or policies are, and they can only say yes to so much, but they are just doing the overall public a very, very big disservice. And it just crushes me. But outside of that, knowing I am a good steward and we are like helping our homeowners protect their greatest asset for, you know, the next 10 years, I would love to say and more, but in Texas and our storm seasons, which happen to now be 365 days a year and our climate, it's just nearly impossible to get 10 years out of a roof here. But I feel like we are good stewards. But with Sugar Creek, Sugar Creek just brings me so much joy. And the fact I get to create and produce content and to be a part of some really incredible events. Like recently, we got to be a part of the Major League Baseball draft. And I got to basically be a set decorator for the draft. And that was amazing. I got to bring in a bunch of Western decor to add to the ambiance of what the set looked like and how it was staged. And it was amazing. What a cool experience, right? And 
what I find when I'm seeing, so I, yes, Sugar Creek brings me a lot of joy, but what people don't realize when you are a business owner, superficially, I feel, especially brand new people who just see the shiny, who just see this shiny and the supposed income that some people are making, I just want to be like, but it's, it's not easy. It is hard. And I feel like we just put this glossy like film on things and we're like, but you'll never work another day in your life. And I'm like, but that is so not true. That's false. That's like the big psych moment of your life. You will work harder than you have ever worked before. Like you will make sacrifices that you never thought you would even like have on a plate in front of you and you have to make a choice. You have to make a sacrifice over something. And most of the time it's your time. And most of the time it might be your family because this is the thing that you've dreamed of. This is the thing that just is going to like be the thing that makes you the thing that you want or that you've been, you know, longing for. And all of that is meant for you if that is what you're chasing. But the hard is part of it too. The hard is part of it too. If it were easy, everyone would be doing it, first of all, and everyone would be millionaires or billionaires. Like that's the reality if it were easy and not hard. But it is hard. And I feel like that's what gets like the sheep pulled over. Like here, here's a day for me yesterday. Honestly, I, I lose track. I have these great intentions of doing like these things and it goes off the rails <laughs> Like on Monday. Oh, you know, that was yesterday. See, I'm even getting my days confused because I just lose track. There's so much going on. We are really busy right now, which is fantastic. In a million years, I don't know that I could have like physically seen what my husband and I are experiencing on the day to day. And uh, by the way, another sidebar, we are buying 11 acres and buying land as an entrepreneur is so incredibly hard, especially a multifaceted entrepreneur. And I don't use QuickBooks because QuickBooks doesn't work for me. I learned the hard way. I don't know if you guys have been a listener long of this show, but I learned the hard way two years ago. I hired a CPA to be our like QuickBooks person. And she told me it was gonna be like $1,000 to, you know, complete whatever year that was that she was initially working on and to set up my QuickBooks. And then it would just be like $100 or $200 a month to maintain it and to like roll through like the things coming in and to slot them where they need to go, whatever. And I just didn't believe her, but I was like, you're the, you're the QuickBooks pro, right? So I agreed to the $1,000 and $3,700 later, there was no change, no difference. And I, I was so angry to be taken advantage of in, in that way, because we had a lead up call. We had like a an onboarding call before we ever agreed to anything. And I, she just didn't listen. And I think that's really frustrating as business owners when you're looking for ideal partners to work with you, like when you're advancing your team or expanding your team and you're looking for people to be a part of that and to be supportive and nurturing and, you know, not make your life harder. I was trying to make my life easier by hiring somebody to take that off my plate. And she just made it infinitely harder. And that wasn't what I was seeking, which totally sucked and was total blow that I had to pay the money. And, but she didn't listen that I told her there's just no way that this is going to work. And she's like, no, but it will. And I'm like, this is like, we have so much fluidity between what we do and it just it's just me and my husband and it's just a lot of fluidity anyways i end up hiring a fantastic human her name is Roxanne she's open book ca on instagram if you are looking for a solution to help you out 
She built me a spreadsheet. I found her on Etsy. I was looking for some kind of spreadsheet that I could use for our bookkeeping that might be able to handle like just the fluidity of what we do. Like we're running eight businesses here. And so I reached out to her and I said, is there any way that I can take this spreadsheet that you have and customize it to make it work for me? So I've been working with her for several years, and when I have a problem in the spreadsheet, whether it's like something stops working or I accidentally delete a formula out, like she's there. So a total like shout out to her because she has really supported our business. But the kicker to this part of the conversation is that I'm trying to buy this acreage that has no house on it and banks are already like it's very challenging because there's not anything they could take away it's just raw land and so they don't really like to fund raw land and while I could just pay cash for it I'm using my cash reserves to actually build my house and anyways I sent them my spreadsheets I didn't actually give them links to them because it would be so confusing but I created PDFs from the data. And the first thing they respond to is, this is a spreadsheet. Well, yeah, no duh, it's a spreadsheet. And they're like, but where's her QuickBooks? I'm like, ah, oh, my QuickBooks, there's no QuickBooks, people. It doesn't work for multifaceted entrepreneurs. There's just no way for it to work for me. I tried. I threw away $3,700, which crushed me, by the way. Who has that just to throw away? Here, it's $3,700 for nothing. Yeah. So I had to talk to whomever is like my person in between the bank. And I was like, listen, I'm an entrepreneur. Like, you guys don't make it this hard for people that have W-2s. And you don't make it this hard for people of 1099s. But who the heck is giving those people the W-2s and 1099s? It's me. It's me. I'm the one that's giving those people those things. And it's like, so why you got to make it this hard? Like, I literally giving you access to my bank accounts and my Fidelity investment accounts. I have a lot of liquid assets. I could just pay cash, write a check, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to exhaust my liquid funds. I want to use the bank's money. And I do have a local bank that would totally do this. But she's like, I really want you to go use a mortgage company. And I'm like, Ugh because eventually it will have a mortgage on it. But yeah, the land money will convert to a mortgage once there's a house. And then the bank will be like, yay, we have something to hold. (laughs) So frustrating as an entrepreneur. Again, it's hard. It's hard being an entrepreneur when you've got somebody like working against you when you're like, but I have, I'm literally showing you my portfolio. I'm literally showing you my net worth. Here it is. It's real. How do you think I like got here? It wasn't gifted. I can show you it wasn't gifted. I can give you a timeline. Worked my butt off. But that's what I'm saying. Like people just have this, I don't know, maybe it's just unrealistic thoughts, unrealistic, I I don't know, about business because it's not easy. And I feel like there's this gloss that people just like, pour on top and like add whipped cream and a cherry and it's like you can be a business owner it's not hard you'll never work another day in your life no you will because we work non-stop now we choose that let's let's you know time out here we choose to work all of the time we do We are here because we choose to work all the time. We are here because we don't have children. We are here because it's just me and my husband. And this is a choice that we make. But I was cooking a smoked turkey until one o'clock this morning. Like, this isn't normal for people because I couldn't cook it this weekend. The the goal was to cook it this past weekend, but there was no time to like nurture a turkey in a smoker (laughs) like I started it at 12 30 and it didn't finish till one o'clock in the morning now part of that was we had rain come in and so my smoker was also working against the cool down temperatures of the storm that came through but anyways it's just not easy and it's not glossy there are highlights definitely like what you create what you put forth what you publish there is a lot of joy 
in that process. But I just wish people would change the conversation because business isn't easy. And I feel like that allures people or like it's like the carrot being dangled in front of them and they're like, you know, like tossing their bags and dropping their purses and flinging off their jackets and they're running towards the carrot and they're like, I want this so badly, but nobody talks about the hard. And if you are a business owner for any length of time, you probably have already experienced hard. And you're like, this sucks. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. Totally agree. It sucks, especially when you have confrontation. Like, I have to have a conversation soon with one of my people in my orbit to be like, you're on your phone too much. Like, why is this a repeat conversation? It, like, the phones were a great invention, right? They were a great invention. Social media was a great invention, but it has caused so much addiction that people don't know how to have boundaries with their phones. And like, I am really close to being like, the moment you cross this threshold into my building, your phone goes on, do not disturb. Like I'm literally close to putting that note on the front door <laughs> because I'm not paying you to play on your phone. I'm I'm just not. And um, I feel like sometimes people take advantage of the fact of that my husband and I are very easy to work for and we're very friendly, we're very giving and um, people like to take advantage of that from time to time. And it's like, ah, but you don't see that I was at my shop actually working. Yes, I was still smoking a turkey, but we have been selling some things on eBay that are like selling like hotcakes and we now have a shipping station in my warehouse and we were packaging up a order that came through yesterday. I think it came through yesterday afternoon and they bought four of them and we have to double box them and we we have to do the work. We have to do the work if it's going to get shipped out, right? So Oh, so anyways, this was super long winded just to say that business isn't easy. It is hard. I wish people would stop glossing it over because there are times, yeah, there are times when it's easy and you can choose to have more easy times, but the hard is just part of it. And I think that that is what separates the long haulers from the dabblers, you know, people like we have RV storage, right? And I see people get so excited they buy an RV and probably 90% of the RVs that are in my storage facility have never gone out. And I'm like, why would you choose to spend that kind of money on something that you'll never use? It's baffling to me. But they get so excited that they're going to be RVers. They're going to take vacations in their RV and it doesn't go anywhere. True story. It doesn't go anywhere. It's crazy. So crazy. Anyways, all that to say, business can bring you so much joy. Sugar Creek brings me a lot of joy. But am I in joy when I'm schlepping furniture to and from events? Uh, I don't think that there's a lot of joy in that part, but like it's rewarding for sure. And the content creation is rewarding. And it does allow me an escape from the insurance crazy that is our construction company, our roofing company. But Business is hard. It's not meant to be easy. It you, There's leadership. There's sacrifice. There's dealing with employees. Like, it's not easy all of the time. And I just want to reiterate that. But you are meant to be where you are right now in this season, in this moment. You are meant for this. Do not, without a shadow of a doubt, like, you are meant for this. It's just not going to always be easy. There's going to be a lot of hard. And I, I just wish there were more conversations about that. Okay. That is all I have for you today. If you are not following me on Instagram, on the gram, please go do that at Boss Girl Creative. And until next week, I hope you have a great rest of this one. Hey, real quick, before I go, I wanted to pop back in and say again, thank you so much for listening to this latest episode of the Purposely Aligned Entrepreneur Podcast. I would so love a favor from you right now. Would you please share this episode with a friend or share it to your social media and tag me at Boss Girl Creative. 
Oh my gosh, that would mean so much to me if you did that right now. Okay, I'll see you next week with a brand new episode.